Yes, if you look at our country, Austin, look. We're blessed. A lot of opportunities, a lot of problems, but the problems are the opportunities. And that's why I can crisscross the sectors. Yes, when I joined the industry, there was a challenge. And I had the privilege to contribute to the solution. That's the DNNPC, creating those policies, uh, the gas pricing policy, the backbone infrastructure design, and going to do the Associated Gas Framework Agreement. We necessarily had those big industries uh, that we talked about today. But then, in the sector I ultimately went into, there was a need to create what you may call center for excellence. Learning excellence. We used to call them the oasis of learning. I mean, with all the chaos around Lagos and Nigeria, could there be some, some oasis? So LBS was an oasis. We then, working at the ECS, we promoted. But even that was challenging. Inconsistency. You see, in the 80s, we said create an environment that will attract investors, that will enable the upstream recoup its uh, costs, its investment costs. And two policies were created. And instead of being punitive, say, if you take ACFA, the gas injection decree, you now say, okay, <clears throat> use the same law, invest in developing infrastructure that can create value for the nation, and put the gas into the domestic market, whichever one. It doesn't, we didn't specify domestic or export, anyway, but a commercial venture. Then we then created a pricing formula, which indeed anchored it to the alternative energy of his stock. What was a sensible thing to do? So as I drive my car, if I wanted to use CNG, I know that I will pay a little bit less. So there was an incentive for me to do it. And the law was very clear. At no time should it be more than 80% of the alternative fuel. So the idea, therefore, was that you will use natural gas to power your economy. And it will be for electricity, and it will be for feedstock, it will be your petrochemical feedstock, and it will be for your fertilizer uh, companies. It will be feedstock for your methanol and ethanol, and you create the petrochemical complexes. But Austin, we did not do it. Simply because government changed its mind and decided to review it. There were investors who wanted to invest, and once a government creates there's a rethink of what they had assumed, it creates uncertainty. When are you going to do the next rethink? And how does it impact me? And it's the bane of our industry. I see a future where the generators will be fewer. Not as, I mean, everybody now has, everybody's, every home is a power generation unit. But I see a, a future where the led by the private sector, with new policy indications we hear in the power sector, where the likes of you and I are the your program today can decide to venture into creating neighborhood power services. I mean, if you go to, you, you use the laws of Norway, if you go to Denmark and some of these places, you find that power and utility are effectively localized. Lekki, for instance, should have its own, and there's no reason why not. But we have very large areas, a spans of area of control, then it becomes a problem. But really, small units of distributors who can also generate their own needs, meet their own needs, that creates a basis for gas supply to those territories, and even homes. People use home and gas at home, naturally. So you don't have to carry your cylinder. So I see that possibility. I don't think it's going to necessarily be led by government. But I think it's people taking advantage of opportunities, just worrying about the pollutions and issues like this that we talked about. Yeah.